So we're here at Starbury Studios in Uppsala, Sweden, and I'm uh, here with Johan, who's the CEO for Starbury. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Cool. Um, maybe just start off with a, a bit of a brief introduction about what the studio uh, is all about and um, kind of a bit of a, a bit of a history. Yeah. Well, uh, the company has been around since 1998. It was uh, started by uh, some sort of garage developers here in Sweden, and now it's grown quite a bit. We're about 100. Uh, people we have a new office now and uh, we're just about to release our sixth game the chronicles of the soul from dark athena they say hope begins in the dark but most just flail around in the blackness searching for their destiny the darkness for me is where i shine And um, yeah, we've um, been working with it in this genre uh, for quite a few years now. I guess it started out with uh, the first Rudy game back in 2004, mm -hmm. sort of story-driven action-adventure game with a mix of different genres. And um, yeah, and then we kept going in that direction with The Darkness that came out in 2007 mm -hmm. uh, for PS3 and 360 as well. And now the third uh, iteration will be this new Riddick game that's uh, coming out now in April. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that um, Butcher Bay really kind of put Starbreeze on the map, didn't it? And it came out of nowhere, just kind of amazed critics and, and kind of fans of, of, of the Riddick universe. What, um, how did that kind of change the studio? What, what's it been like since then? Oh, it was a big change. It was actually really tough for us before Riddick came out. Uh, we were pretty much out of assignments and out of money and uh, we were laying off most of our staff in early 2004 mm. and uh, then really came out and um, yeah all of a sudden all publishers were very interested in talking to us and uh, we got the new darkness contract and yeah we've been growing and expanding ever since. Mm. What, one of the things about um, Riddick is that it's you know it's almost a kind of assumption that that movie time games are always bad and that kind of bucked the trend and proved that you could actually make a, a game based on a, on a film that was amazing. Well, why do you think that, that, that was the case? Was it because Vin was so closely involved with you? or How was your approach, I guess, different from what other studios have done with, with no, I think we, we did have the, pretty much the same two problems that you have with any game based on a movie, that it's shorter production time due to the movie day and date, and it's a much more complicated approval process with the, you know, the license holder, etc. So it was pretty much a, a mess during the whole Riddick uh, Butcher Bay production as well with, uh, with those things. So I'm not quite sure actually why it did work out in the end. I mean, it, it, it was a, it's a struggle every day to make a good game and uh, it was exactly the, the same during that production. So I'm not, I don't really know why it came out different. I think one difference maybe was that we made a prequel mm. so it was a little bit more detached from the, uh, the script changes etc that you yeah. sometimes have to struggle with when you work in parallel with the movie production. Do, do you guys uh, do you find that kind of using licenses is, um, is a good way to make games because you know obviously you've got, you've got Riddick, the darkness space on a comic, do you kind of find that that uh, works particularly well for, for your studio? Or? Yeah I think um, I mean, if you find licenses that uh, you know the team here is excited about, I think that's that's the best thing. I mean, it's uh, uh, it's so much easier to uh, to get a license game out there in the end to consumers because it's some it's a brand they recognize and you know that they already have a relationship with. And and for us, uh, I mean, it does create some boundaries, of course, in terms of uh, creation, but. You know, you always have boundaries, and even if you start an original IP after a week, you set up those boundaries for yourself because you need them. Um, and then it's not that much uh, different, actually, to, to work on an original or a licensed IP. And um, yeah, I think uh, we've, been, uh, we've been very happy working on, on licenses here, and I think we've you know, proven that we can do a good job. Mm. 
Cool. And then after that, you're um, moving on to Jason Bourne with uh, EA. Yeah. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about that, that deal and how that kind of came about? Um, well, we've been working uh, with EA for, uh, for a while before, we have another project with them as well, and then they wanted to extend that relationship with the Jason Bourne deal. Um, but can't say okay. much. Yeah. Are else. you guys fans of the of, of Jason Bourne? Was it kind of oh, your yeah. idea or was it their idea to do no, Jason Bourne? No, we're re really big fans of, uh, of Jason Bourne, so it's yeah. a big project. 